What is the number one factor influencing your destiny in life? The quality of your decisions. Here quality means the eventual outcomes that you want to reach. There's no decision without direction. Our brains are the instruments that we use to come with decisions. But are they truly helping us? In this video, I will share with you the most common cognitive biases which impact our decision making, where are they coming from, and what you can do to keep them in check. It's time to train your brain. My name is Greg and Childbert. I've had about a 20 year corporate career where I went from being a trainee to eventually a managing director, vice president. And I went from managing just one person myself to eventually about a thousand people. Today I'm a master coach and I help people, teams and organization to know themselves, to design their future self and to become their future selves. Cognitive biases are systematic patterns of deviation from objective thinking in judgment and decision making. They are the results of mental shortcuts and heuristics that our brain uses to process rapidly information. These shortcuts help us to make decisions in a variety of situations and very fast, but at the same time they can come with error of judgments. So why do we have cognitive biases in the first place? Simply put, our biological design is badly adapted to the life we live today. Let me explain. We have evolved through many different steps to eventually become Homo sapiens, the species that we are today. Along the way, different parts of our brains have evolved and were created to adapt to the environment in which we lived. This started with the most basic automatisms that we have in our body, like breathing or your heart beating, to basic reflexes of survival when we're facing threats. So it can be the fight, flight or freeze mode and eventually to complex rational thinking and emotional regulation for social interactions. So many unconscious functions that we have in our brain for, for our body, for our behaviors every day, are based on a type of life that we've lived long ago in ancestral times. This was a state of nature, a very direct relationship with our environment, and we were living in small groups and facing threats on a daily basis. Our modern life is bringing very different threats than what we were designed for, and our brain can react to them in a very unhelpful way sometimes. Knowing how to recognize and control cognitive biases will help you. First, it will help you avoid smart people mistakes. There are very specific cognitive biases that smart people fall prey to. It will also help you make critical decisions. Here you can use your biases like some sort of checklist to check the way you're reasoning about something. This way you understand behaviors and you can predict future in a better way for better decisions. And third, you can protect yourself from manipulation. Sometimes cognitive biases are used against you to get something out of you. And usually it's about money or your data. Our brains are very well designed for rewarding us based on certain behaviors or wanting to avoid pain. That translates into the fact that to do pretty much anything, we whether are reacting to a reward uh, or a punishment. Rewards and punishment don't need to come from others. They can just come from your environment or even ourselves. This bias is hard-coded in all life because it is life's way of getting feedback from our environment. So what can you do about and with this bias? Pay attention to the way you answer to reward and punishment. This will allow you to understand if you are okay with your reaction. Like when you are doing scrolling through social media, are you really okay with the fact that you're getting a sort of reward through dopamine through scrolling from doing that. What is the other side of the coin? A second way to use this bias is to get to know what are the incentives that are influencing the people around you. If you know that, then you can find ways of motivating people around you in the best way possible, whether it's your family, your friend, your partner, or your team. And I'm assuming that you have a positive intent in your influence. Also notice that people you are interacting with, particularly people who are doing professional services for you, have the right type of incentive with the way they serve you. For instance, financial advisors do not have always the right incentive to do best for you. Mostly they will do best for themselves. And control your need for reward by doing the hard work first so you can get a much better reward later. We have a tendency to favor or show positive attitudes towards members of our own social group, which is the in-group, versus what is an out-group, which is not part of our social group. This is probably coming from the fact that forming a small group in ancestral times was giving us an advantage compared to individual people in terms of surviving the environment in which we used to live and also surviving against other groups and accessing better rewards from the environment with doing things as a group. This bias leads to a number of behaviors like distorting facts, ignoring faults, 
complying with wishes, and favoring people, products, actions associated with the object of our affection. So what can you do about and with this bias? Be aware of who you like and what you tend to do in terms of making them like you. Then check your life goals, your aspiration, where you're going with your life and check that what you're doing for those people is actually in line with what you want out of your life. And make sure that you check those elements and decide if this has been bringing positives in your life. Also make sure that you spend some time to understand the limitations of people that you admire, that you love, that you like, so you bring them down to earth. They're not perfect, which means that not everything that comes out of their mouth is a truth. And finally, if you want to build a relationship with someone, then understand what in-group you can join that they're already part of. The opposite of this bias is the disliking, hating tendency. For this one, the main point is to be aware of people, products, actions you are shutting down just because you have a stated distate. So here you have to keep an open mind and look at the two sides of the coin. In average, we have to make 35,000 decisions per day. To be able to do that, our brains have developed a capacity for avoiding doubt so they're able to quickly come to a decision. That's quite useful if you're facing a predator. This is particularly true if we're facing stress or if you were in periods of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance happens when we're facing a decision or moment where our values or beliefs are contrary to what we see in this decision. So what can you do about and with this bias? Understand what kind of pressure you're experiencing right now to take a decision. Most of the time you will discover that there is a false sense of urgency that is creating undue stress for this decision. And take a break when you want to take an important decision. Take a little bit of distance that will help you to have more calm about it. And get social support from like-minded people who are going to be reinforcing your beliefs and values. And align your behaviors and decisions to what your beliefs and values are. And for that, you do need to know your values, your beliefs, your interests, etc. Basically, you need to know more about yourself. If you want to know more, check out this video here. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do and also subscribe and put the notifications on if you want to receive content like this every week. And check out all the resources which are in the description of the video if you want to learn more about cognitive biases. Always good to get multiple voices about the topic. Following on the aspect of cognitive dissonance, we rarely do things that are inconsistent with the identity we have built for ourselves. This is a way for our brain to save energy. Once we create a neural pathway, then it requires energy to do that. Then let's use this neural pathway as much as possible. And some of our habits are good and some others not so much. And again, here good means something which is good for what you want out of your life and bad for something which is going against what you want out of your life. What can you do about and with this bias? Make a list of your good and bad habits and think about how you could replace one bad habit with a good one. Just aim at one every six months, because it takes time to get rid of a bad habit and to create a good one. Understand the belief system that you have behind your decisions and actions. Sometimes we do things automatically and we do not question what is the belief system that we have and whether this belief system is serving us in the best way possible. Or we don't even know if this belief system is factual. It's never too late in life to build good habits. You can start anytime and you can build them for the rest of your life. If you're interested in knowing more about how to do that, check this out. Curiosity, when you boil it down to the essential, is a means for information gathering. For instance, we have a preference for novelty, which is called perceptual curiosity. We explore and seek out new things and eventually we get bored with them, so we want to explore even more. We also have epistemic curiosity, which is our desire to seek knowledge and to eliminate uncertainty. Curiosity has evolved in us as part of a constant need to adapt to our environment. It's all about survival. What can you do about and with this bias? Curiosity is about adaptation. The more you know, the better your decisions will be. Curiosity also counters a number of other negative biases that would prevent you from knowing new people for trying new things in life. And you can cultivate curiosity. We all have curiosity inside us. You can take a challenge next time that you face somebody expressing an idea that you disagree with or somebody that you dislike. Instead of reacting and closing down, think about how you can be curious about them or about the idea. Listen fully to what they have to say. And then ask why do they think the way they do? And being curious helps enjoy the process of learning. 
So instead of resenting something that you have to do, something that you have to learn, then ask yourself the question of how can I actually make this interesting for myself? How can I link it to something that matters to me? And if you want to learn more about becoming a better listener, check this video. Fairness is a universal value for human beings and is linked to building trust between us as social animals. And it's closely linked to our natural inclination to reciprocate. If someone scratches your back, you scratch theirs. To conquer new habitats in the past, we've had to cooperate very extensively with each other. And through evolution, the best way of cooperating with each other has been to do it fairly and with reciprocity. So what can you do about and with those biases? Start with giving to others. This will create trust at the beginning and also you can judge whether people are going to reciprocate. When you want to negotiate, start with a high point. Then you can go eventually to the point that satisfies you. This is the best way of actually creating satisfaction on both sides. Ask something small from someone. They're most likely to say yes. Then progressively, you can start to have bigger ass from that person and reciprocate. If someone acts unfairly with you and does not reciprocate, then count the strikes. My number of strikes is two. I consider that the first time might be a mistake. By the second time, it's definitely a pattern. It's time to walk away from that relationship. And you can come back to that relationship if the person is reciprocating, but they will need to do more. Another aspect of our evolution has been around competing for limited resources. Coupled with the fact that usually the strongest was getting access to most of the resources, that has created this envy, this jealousy for what others have. Interestingly, research shows that our self-esteem suffers the most when it's people close to us and competing with us in areas that are important to us. This can drive us to anger, fights, and even to larceny. Not so great behaviors to get along with your friends. So what can you do about and with those biases? Counterintuitively, be vulnerable when people are jealous of you. If they get to know the good, the bad, and the ugly of your lives, they are less likely to be jealous of you. Pay attention to the emotions that you have when you are jealous or envious. Strong emotions are always a way to know that there is something going on inside you. There is a friction and it's worth investigating it. A key element also is to understand what makes you happy, what makes you motivated, and what is it that you are looking for when you're looking at that person. Focusing on what matters to you puts back the emphasis on what you can control, what you want out of what you see out of people, and what you're going to do about it yourself. It's not a vague hope to be like them. And sometimes it's just good to remove yourself from the environment which is creating this jealousy, this envy. Then you will have more time to process it, understand it. Through those seven cognitive biases, you might have found that there is a link. The link is awareness. Those biases show up for everyone. We all have them. At different levels, but we all have them. The difference is that some people are aware of those biases. They understand them, they control them, and they use them in the best way possible for their lives. Others are victims of them. I believe in choice, and cultivating awareness, curiosity, is the best way to choose wisely. I will leave you with a quote from Richard Feynman, a physics Nobel Prize winner. The first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. If you're interested in more decision-making tools to live the life that you want, then you might be interested in this video about mental models.